Hello everyone. Uh, for my next video, I just thought I would show you my uh, my uh, DVDs. So here's what I have. The first film is uh, In Country, starring Bruce Willis, Emily Lloyd, and uh, directed by Norman Jewison. In my opinion, this is something of an overlooked film. Uh, it's really well made, and uh, Bruce Willis and Emily Lloyd both give really good performances as well. Next is Cold Comfort Farm, starring Kate Beckinsale, Joanna Lumley, and uh, uh, Ian McKellen, among others. And uh, this is the film that introduced me to Kate Beckinsale. I had the pleasure of seeing this on Cinemax late one night a few years ago, and um, and uh, I, I really enjoyed the film. And uh, I enjoyed it so much that I think a few months later I bought it on VHS, and just recently I got it on uh, DVD. So I'm still holding out for an eventual Blu-ray release of the film. Next is Funny About Love, starring Gene Wilder, Christine Lottie, and uh, Mary Stuart Matheson. And it's directed by Mr. Spock himself, Leonard Nimoy. And uh, in my opinion, this is an, un an underrated comedy. Um, uh, I know it didn't do well at the box office, but um, I uh, found it for $1.95 in the uh in the uh budget D V D bin at McKay use um used book CDs, DVDs and more. And um like I said, it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty funny movie so so uh you know check check it out one day people if you if you haven't seen it. The next two are Small Wonder seasons one and two and uh I grew up watching this show uh, back in the late 80s. Uh, this is such a funny show. It was way ahead of its time. Uh, it lasted from 1985 to 1989. And uh, I love Vicky the Robot Girl, played by uh, Tiffany Brissett on the show. And uh, I, was, I was excited when I heard the news that Small Wonder was coming to DVD. And I want to thank uh, Shout Factory for that one. Um... They haven't announced or released seasons three or four, three and four yet. So, so you know, Shout Factory needs to hurry up and hurry up and announce them. Okay, next is Where Angels Go, Trouble Follows. This is the sequel to uh, The Trouble with Angels, and then I I uh, saw this movie late one night. On a TCB on a TCM movie channel, and uh, it was it was it was a pretty funny film. Um, uh, had has a good cast, including uh, Rosalind Russell and Stella Stevens, and um, and uh, this is um, Susan St. James. This was years before she starred on the uh, TV show Kate and Alley. Okay, next is Pistol Whipped. Starring Steven Seagal. I know that Steven Seagal is the butt of many a joke nowadays, but um, and uh, but to be honest, uh, like I said, uh, you know, I, I I grew up watching most of Steven Seagal's movies. You know, his earlier films like Above the Law and uh, Hard to Kill, and uh, this is uh, one of his uh, directed video movies that he that he's done in in the in the past few years. And of all of the uh, director video movies that he's done, not all of them are good. This this happens to be this happens to be one of the better one of the better efforts in my opinion. And plus it has uh Lance Henriksen in the film as well, so that's a plus. Okay, next is Inspector Gadget from Disney, starring uh Matthew Broderick and uh Rupert Everett. Uh, this is a guilty pleasure of mine here. Um, I haven't seen Inspector Gadget in a, in a while since I had it on VHS, and um, I hope that uh, Disney will um, will uh, announce it on Blu-ray uh, one of these days. I mean, it's been out for over ten years. I mean, I don't know why why they haven't done a Blu-ray of it yet. I mean, 
let alone a double feature of this and uh, the direct video sequel Inspector Gadget 2. Uh, and I have seen Inspector Gadget 2 by the way and uh, it, it was it's okay but not great. I mean like I said Matthew Broderick played a better Inspector Gadget than uh, French Stewart did in the sequel. Okay next is uh, The Manhattan Project starring John Litgo, Christopher Collet and Cynthia Nixon in one of her early film roles before Sex in the City. And uh, this is a really good film. Uh, this is from 1986. And um, I think it's on Netflix right now if none of you have seen the film. So so uh, check it out. Next is Enigma starring uh, Du Gray Scott. Kate Winslet, Jeremy Northam, and uh, Saffron Burroughs. And uh, this is a really good film as, as well. Next up is uh, Tabitha, the complete entire series. Uh, this is the uh, spinoff to Bewitched. And uh, the show stars uh, Lisa Hartman. Uh, this, and, uh, this, this was way before uh, Lisa Hartman married... Uh, uh, country music star uh, Clint Black and uh, the show also stars uh, the late Robert Urich before he starred on uh, Spencer for Hire and uh, uh, the this uh, this show ran for only uh, 13 episodes back in uh, 1977 and uh, I haven't found the time to watch this yet but um, I but I will I will soon next is Bright Lights Big City. I already showed you this in uh, my uh, movie tag video. Brilliant film. Um, you know, check it out. Check it out, people. Uh, I think I think Big Lots sells this film for, I think, $3, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, brilliant film, people. Next is The Other Side of Midnight. This is based on the uh, best-selling novel by Sidney Sheldon, and uh, it stars uh, French actress Marie France Pizier, and uh, it also stars uh, Susan Sarandon in one of her early film roles. And um, it was released back in 1977, around the same time that uh, Star Wars was released in theaters, and people had low expectations on Star Wars that uh, it would become a box office failure. And they were expecting The Other Side of Midnight to be a box office hit. Well, unfortunately, Star Wars became the box office hit while The Other Side of Midnight became the box office failure. And it's too bad because this film is a really good film. And granted, it's, it's, a, little, it's, a, it's a little over two and a half hours, but it's still really good. And it deserves a lot more credit now than it, than it got in the past. Okay, next is Billion Dollar Brain starring uh, Michael Caine and Carl Malden a really good spy thriller I mean no one does the classic spy thriller better than Michael Caine next is Cuba from uh, 1979 and uh, starring Sean Connery and uh, Brooke Adams and uh, I saw this on TV uh, one night a while back and uh, it's a really good film, and yeah, it's a really good film. And it, up until now, it was hard to find on DVD, but uh, with with this last trip to uh, McKay, I uh, I found it for a uh, for a pretty decent price, three ninety five. So I, I snapped it up in a heartbeat. Okay, next, Remington Steel seasons one, two. And four and five. I still need season three to complete the set. And um, of course, this is Pierce Brosnan years before he became James Bond. And um, in fact, Pierce Brosnan was set to star as James Bond in 1987 for The Living Daylights until, but uh, unfortunately, uh, popularity for Remington Steel had grown amongst, amongst fans. So, um, Unfortunately, he lost the, the role of Bond to Timothy Dalton. But um, anyway, um, 
You got Pierce Brosnan and uh, Stephanie Zimbalist. Both are really good on the show. Uh, I haven't found the time to watch it, um, but uh, I will one day. Okay, next is Heart of Dixie, starring Ali Sheedy, Virginia Madsen, Phoebe Cates, and Treat Williams. Uh, it's not a bad. It's not a bad film. Um, I mean, granted, uh, it didn't do good at the box office, but still, but still not a bad film. Uh, Phoebe Cates uh, doesn't have a whole lot of screen time in the film, but she does do good with what little of it that she has. Uh, she's she's my uh, her character is my my favorite in the film. Next is Remo Williams: The Adventure Begins, starring Fred Ward, Joel Gray, and Wilfred Brimley, and uh, also starring uh, Kate Mulgrew, years before she starred as uh, Captain Janeway on uh, Star Trek Voyager. And this is a really funny uh, action comedy. Uh, I think it's on Netflix right now. If uh, no one has seen it, uh, this is based on the uh, the Destroyer book series. And I'm still awaiting a uh, a Blu-ray release of this as well. Next is the Terminal, starring Tom Hanks and Catherine Zeta Jones, and directed by Steven Spielberg. Really sweet film. There's, I mean, very also a very funny film as well. Um, I'm still waiting for a Blu-ray release of this. Uh, I mean, I mean, come on, uh, come on, Spielberg. It's been when when did this come out? It's come out. It came out in 2004. So, so if I mean, I'm guessing they're gonna wait till next year for the 10th anniversary before they before they finally release it on Blu-ray. I mean, come on, come on, Spielberg. Don't keep us waiting. Alright, next is Pumpkin, starring Christina Ricci. Really funny film. Um, uh, Christina Ricci plays a, 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 sorority, uh, a sorority girl who, uh, who um, has the perfect life, um, you know, the perfect boyfriend and everything. Uh, nothing, n nothing could be better. But uh, one day, um, she volunteers for this, um, for this uh, special, uh, special Olympics type event, and uh, she falls in love with a uh, with a handicapped boy named uh, Pumpkin. And um, the more time she spends with Pumpkin, the more the more that uh, her that her friends and uh, her boy and uh, her boyfriend do not do not like it, and um, and she's basically ostracized because of it. Uh, but anyway, really funny film. Uh, it also features uh, Melissa McCarthy in one of her early film roles as well, before she did uh, Mike and Molly and uh, Bridesmaids and The Heat. Okay, next is The Man Who Loved Women, starring Burt Reynolds and Julie Andrews, and also starring Kim Basinger and uh, Mary Lou Henner from uh, Taxi. And uh, I found this at a Dollar Tree one day. Uh, this movie had been hard to find up until, up until I found it at Dollar Tree. And it's uh, a remake of a. Uh, uh, this is a, a 1983 remake of a 1970s film about uh, a man who, who uh, is completely enamored with uh, with every woman he sees, and that throws him into a midlife crisis as well. Yeah, that throws him into a midlife crisis. I haven't found the time to watch it, but I will soon. Next is uh, Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express from uh, 1974, uh, directed by Sidney Lumet and featuring a brilliant all-star cast. Uh, you have Albert Finney uh, here. Uh, he's barely recognizable in the film because of all the makeup, but um, anyway, Albert Finney playing... Uh, the famous Belgian detective Hercule Poirot, and and you have a an all star cast including Lauren Bacall, Martin Balsam, Ingrid Bergman, uh, Jacqueline Bissett, uh, Sean Connery, uh, John Gilgood, uh, Anthony Perkins, uh, Vanessa Redgrave, Richard Whitmark, and uh, Michael York. Brilliant film. Uh, they they don't they don't make them like this anymore. And uh, I'm, I hope that um, that Warner Brothers, who who now owns most of uh, Paramount's 
uh, 600, uh, 600 title uh, library. I hope that Warner Bros. announces this this film for a Blu-ray release one day. Next is uh, Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile from 1978. Really good, really good film as well. Um, Peter Ustinov takes over for Albert Finney as a Hercule Poirot, and uh, and uh, he uh, he is supported by an all-star cast including Betty Davis and uh, David Niven, Angela Lansbury and uh, Mia Farrow, uh, George Kennedy, uh, and Maggie Smith. Um, years before she starred as uh, Professor McGonagall in the uh, Harry Potter movies. Really good who done it. And next is Agatha Christie's Evil Under the Sun from 1981. Once again, starring Peter Ustinov and an all-star cast, including James Mason and uh, Roddy McDowell and uh, Diana Rigg and Maggie Smith. Really, really good film. The, the scenery in the film is breathtaking. Next is The Other Side of Heaven, based on a true story and starring uh, Anne Hathaway in one of her earlier films. I think she starred in this film before she uh, starred in The Princess Diaries. And uh, it also stars uh, Christopher Gorham from the, uh, show, from the TV show uh, Covert Affairs on USA. Really good film. I, I got this on uh, Disney Movie Rewards a while back. Next is Metropolis. I'm not a big anime fan, but um, I decided to give this a shot uh, after I um, found this at a Dollar Tree, and and I I really enjoyed it. I mean, I mean, the, the whole the whole the whole film is the whole film is, is beautiful. I mean, I I hope that they I hope that they bring it bring this out on Blu-ray one day. Yeah, you have nice fold-out packaging here. And you have the DVD here and. Um, this is like a uh, a mini DVD here, but but uh, it'll play on all it'll play in all DVD players. Um, but for those of you who have like a, a PlayStation Three that that has a front loading slot, uh, I I probably wouldn't advise um, wouldn't advise trying to load it in from one of, from a, a front loading PS Three because because chances are I don't I don't know if it's going to come out of the of the uh, player or not but anyway that's metropolis really good film okay next is no way out starring uh, kevin costner gene hackman sean young and uh, will Patton. Uh, a really good thriller uh, from 1987 really good thriller um, i hope mgm announces this on on Blu-ray one day because I will I will snap it up in a heartbeat if they do. Next is Julian Poe, starring uh, Christian Slater and Robin Tunney, and uh, this is this is one of those overlooked gems of a film as as well. Uh, it's about a a man named uh, Julian Poe, yeah Julian Poe, who uh, who. Uh, travels to this small town and um the residents are wondering why he's there and uh and uh he uh bluntly tells him that he's there to kill himself so uh some so uh, the residents take pity on him and they do all these uh they do all these um you know these special things for him and everything and along the way he uh he uh, meets and falls in love with a young woman played by Robin Tunney and um and his and uh, his spending time with her, uh, it it gives it gives him a reason to live. Uh, yeah, it give it gives him a reason to live in the film. But uh, anyway, this is this is a, a really good film. I don't know how hard it is to find on on DVD nowadays, but uh, you should but uh, everyone should check this out. Okay, next is Left Behind, the original movie. Uh, starring uh, Kirk Cameron and uh, Brad Johnson, and um, I've, I've had this on, I've had this in my collection for a very long time, 
and uh, I and I, I have seen the sequels, um, and uh, you know I, I thought this was pretty good. Um, I know that uh, that they're going to remake Left Behind. Uh, I know they're going to remake Left Behind, uh, and uh, that uh, Nicolas Cage is supposed to star in it as well, along with uh, Ashley Tisdale and uh, Chad Michael Murray from that show uh, One Tree Hill. Okay, next is The Hours, directed by uh, Stephen Daldry and starring Nicole Kidman, Julianne Moore, and Meryl Streep, along with an all-star cast including uh, Ed, Ed Harris, uh, Claire Danes, uh, Jeff Daniels, and um, John C. Riley, and uh, Allison Janney, yeah, Allison Janney, among others. <coughs> And uh, this is the film that won Nicole Kidman the Academy Award for Best Actress for playing uh, for playing uh, the writer Virginia Woolf. Very good film. Very good film. Okay, uh, I hope this I hope this gets a Blu-ray. I hope it gets a Blu-ray release soon. Next is Elizabeth Town, directed by Cameron Crowe and starring Orlando Bloom, uh, Kirsten Dunst, and uh, Susan Sarandon, uh, Alec Baldwin. And uh, Jessica Biel, among others. This is a really good film as well, and uh, it has yet to see the light of day on Blu-ray, but I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, next is *The Stafford Wives*, directed by Frank Oz, and starring Nicole Kidman, Matthew Broderick, Bette Midler, Christopher Walken, Faith Hill, and Glenn Close. And uh, I know that this was critically panned back uh, back when it was released, but uh, and uh, of course this is the remake to the nineteen seventies nineteen seventies film of the same name. But uh, whereas that whereas the original film was more of a thriller, this one is more of a is more of a a comedy, so to speak. But uh, for the most part, I I, I actually enjoyed the uh, the remake of the Stepford Wives. Okay, next. Is John Grisham's *The Rainmaker*, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and starring Matt Damon, Danny DeVito, Claire Danes, uh, John Voight, uh, Mary Kay Place, um, Dean Stockwell, and uh, let's see, uh, Virginia Madsen's in it, and uh, Dean, yeah, Virginia Madsen's in it, um, Mickey Rourke, and uh, Roy Scheider is in it, uh, among others. Uh, this is probably one of the better John Grisham adaptations that I've seen in a long time. Uh, uh, let's see, most of the most of the film was made was made in Memphis, Tennessee, where where I live, by the way. And um, this has yet to be announced on Blu-ray, so I'm I'm looking I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this on Blu-ray real soon. Okay, next are a couple of. DVDs that I got from Dollar Tree. Well, one I think both of them came from Walmart actually. One of them, uh, the first one is uh, Somewhere Tomorrow, starring a a young Sarah, Des Sarah Jessica Parker. Not a bad film. Yeah, yeah, not a bad film. Of course, this was years before she starred on Sex in the City. And next is Dead Silent. Starring Rob Lowe and uh, Catherine Mary Stewart. Um, not not a bad little thriller, you know, a pretty good time waster. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, got a few more DVDs to show you. Next is uh, Sharky's Machine, directed by and starring Burt Reynolds. And uh, Burt Reynolds describes this film as a. Um, a dirty, a dirty Harry, uh, yeah, a dirty Harry goes to Atlanta, so to speak, and this is a really, really good thriller. I mean, you have Burt Reynolds uh, with a with a pretty good cast, including uh, Brian Keith and uh, Charles Durning, uh, Bernie Casey, Henry Silva, and uh, Rachel Ward, and. Um, and uh, this has yet to see the light of day on Blu-ray, but I'm I'm still looking forward to it as uh, on Blu-ray as well. Next 
is the uh, double feature of uh, Diner and Liberty Heights. Both films are directed by Barry Levinson. And to be honest, I got this double feature just for Liberty Heights. Um, Liberty Heights is a really good film. You know, it features a, uh, an all-star cast including uh, Adrian Brody, uh, Ben Foster, um, and uh, Joe Montaigne, among others. And uh, I I think I've only seen Diner once, and um, and Diner has its share of, of of an all-star cast too, including uh, Steve Gutenberg, Daniel Stern, Mickey Rourke, uh, Kevin Bacon, Tim Daly, uh, Ellen Barkin, and uh, Paul Reiser. So um, I guess uh, when I get some time, I'll I'll watch Diner. Oh yeah, and uh, Kevin Bacon is also in Diner as well. Okay, next is April Fool's Day from uh, 1986, and uh, this is like this is like a childhood classic for me. I mean, I I, I can't remember how old I was when uh, when I when I watched it, but uh, but uh, it's it's a really good film. Okay, next is the uh, the short-lived TV show Ten Speed and Brown Shoe. Starring uh, Jeff Goldblum and uh, Ben Vereen, and uh, and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure none of you have I'm pretty sure none of you have have ever heard of this show, but uh, it was short lived. Uh, it was from 1980, and um, I got this from uh, Big Lots. Uh, I think it was like I think I paid five dollars for it, and from what I've from what I've seen of it, it it's actually it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's actually it's it's a pretty funny uh, detective show. Okay, next is the Outsiders: The Complete Novel Edition. Uh, is this is like a few minutes longer than the uh, original uh, ninety-one minute theatrical cut, and of course, this is based on the best-selling novel that I'm pretty sure most of us has read by uh, S. E. Hinton. And of course, you have you have Matt Dillon, C. Thomas Howe, uh, Ralph Macchio, Rob Lowe, the late Patrick Swayze, Emilio Estevez, and uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, this is this is such a really really good film. Um, you know, if you have to see one version of The Outsiders, people see this version, the the complete novel. The, yeah, the complete novel edition. It adds it adds uh, some extra scenes that the. Uh, Theatrical edition didn't uh, didn't have. Okay, and last but not least is um, Airwolf season four. Uh, I'm a, I, I used to watch this show a lot uh, years ago. Uh, this is the fourth and final season of the show. Uh, it was this was made in Canada, and uh, of course the first three seasons of the first three seasons of the show. Starred uh, Jan Michael Vincent and uh, Ernest Borgnine, while uh, season four uh, only uh, Jan Michael Vincent appeared in the first episode of season four. And um, uh, Dick Van Dyke's uh, son Barry Van Dyke takes over on uh, season four as um, the long lost the, the long lost brother of a uh, Stringfellow Hawk uh, named uh, Sinjin Hawk. And uh, I know a lot. Of this season gets a lot of hate because um you know that it's inferior to the uh the first three seasons of the show but you know to be honest i mean and that um but to be honest you know season four you know it deserves it deserves uh, a lot more credit than uh than it sh than uh originally had gotten you know i'm surprised that um that uh, they haven't done an airwolf movie yet but i hope i i really hope that they uh do an airwolf film uh, pretty soon. Okay, guys, this has been my video showing you all of the DVDs that I have. Rate, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you thought of the video. And I will see you later. Thank you for watching. Bye.